Welcome in everybody to Betting Pros. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia. That, of course, is Scott Bogman. And it's you. And today, we're talking about the national champion. That's right. The ball games are in the dust. Now, it's about the one remaining game. It is solely about the national championship. And it's a rematch of a game that... Well, let's just say the outcome was not what we expected the first time around. Alabama and Georgia are going to square off again. It was very entertaining the first time, unless, of course, you were a fan of Georgia or had money on that side of the game. But that is going to be super fun. And Boggs, I got to tell you, it's been a fun bowl season. I enjoyed the Notre Dame OK State game quite a bit. The Utah versus Ohio State game was entertaining. The, the college playoff games I thought were kind of underwhelming a little bit, but I think that's a good thing because I feel like when those games are great, the national championships are done <laughs> and vice versa. So I think this one we're going to get coming up next Monday is going to be a banger, my friend. I hope so, man. I, I told you, I all I want to do is get up here and slander North Carolina. Uh, I cannot believe they choked the <laughs> South Carolina. That was unbelievable to me. We weren't even talking about You were just waiting to unload on that no matter what I uh, said I just, to you. I just no matter what the question, it. you were going to unload about North Carolina. I just can't believe it. You you were talking about the other bowl games. So, look, I, I found I found a way to wedge it in there. Yeah, right? yeah so, you did. Uh, Tennessee choked. Um, we saw uh, Central Michigan beat Washington State. That was a surprise. Uh, we watched Notre Dame absolutely choke. Like, I'm sitting there in the first half of that Notre Dame game going, oh, man, I've got Notre Dame on lockdown. This is mm. easy. And then not only did Oklahoma State win, then we had to get a whole Mike Gundy speech after that. Like, no one's sick of his nonsense. Um, <laughs> Kentucky uh, barely beat Iowa. Uh, Ohio State, Utah was an awesome Rose Bowl. God, how great was that game? Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, the only uh, big thing that happened outside of, of course, the playoff games was the Matt Corral injury. But mm -hmm. it looks like it's not going to be that bad, but it did you know, wreck my betting day. I'll say that. So I had Ole Miss against Baylor. But, um, you know, uh, Matt Corral, I in seeing Matt Corral get hurt, I think. And it was after Desmond Howard and Kirk Herbstreit. Did you hear them go off on that weird these kids don't love football nonsense because oh, it's just yeah. so <clears throat> old and stupid and tired. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. just, I think that take is just so bad. You know, you can say the kids don't uh, love football and you know, whatever you can say that if you want, it's just not true. dude. Like these guys are trying to make some money, you know, mm -hmm. and going to the NFL is their big payday. And if they don't want to risk injury and getting hurt, I mean, skip the bowl game and you know what you want to make these games worth playing make little tournaments you know the the college football uh or college right. basketball like has college the nit basketball <clears throat> right they have the nit why can't we have a college football nit right and if you expand the playoff more kids will play for that as well i think that's another thing that people don't look at they go well you know georgia and alabama are the best teams in the country and uh, it's obvious every year so why do we even have a four-team playoff right all right, we'll give them a couple more weeks to try to get through a schedule. Maybe they'll slaughter those teams. Maybe they don't. Maybe mm -hmm. someone will scheme them up real good, and the next team will beat them with that same scheme. You know, so I just um, I think that that Kirk Herb Street take that Desmond Howard take is just tired and old and stupid. I I gotta agree with you. I don't believe in it either. You know, these universities make millions and millions, millions of dollars off these kids. You know, they don't care at the end of the day if, if they come out. I mean, I'm sure they don't want them to get hurt, but it doesn't matter to them at the end of the day. And they're just there to make more and more money by winning a bowl game. And then there's more money that's all surrounded about that. I have no problem with any of these kids who are going to be first round picks sitting out or second round picks or whatever it is. Right. I am perfectly fine with this. I'm at peace with it. And yeah, there is an old school mentality about, well, the school spirit and all that stuff. But, you know, I think we're a little bit more educated and wise about exactly what goes start... on in the university situation now. And these universities are making billions yeah. of dollars now. Dude. It's not the same as it was necessarily back in the day. I mean, this is enormous money now. Not that it wasn't not 20 seeing... years ago, but still. We're not seeing the kids in the tournament opt out. Right. So I still don't think we've seen any of those kids opt out. Well, no, so. because there's pride in national championship. Right. And I think there's an expectation when you go to those schools. You play, you're look, playing for your teammates, playing. too. You right. know, like you've been playing with them for three years, four years, even if it's just a season, it doesn't matter. You're all in it together to get that job done. Mm -hmm. I understand it's the same for, a, a, you know, a bowl game or whatever, but there's a lot of teams that don't make money going to a bowl game. They have to pay to get to that bowl. So, right. you know, I just, 
it, it's a horrible take from Herb Street. And I think Herb Street does a pretty great job on. Oh, on, yeah, they on both the do. ESPN. But um, I, I don't. Desmond I, does I don't, a great job, too. But I just I hate it. It's that an thing. outdated thought process. It is. And, I and, I, so. and I get where they're coming from. And there is a certain, you know, pride football, your teammates and Absolutely. all that stuff. But there's just too much money at stake now. This is right. this is not a little bit of money. This is life changing money. And this, this is, is generational you get, you know, changing money. I, I, I knew. Matt Corral was not going to opt out. And I think anyone that knows Matt Corral uh, knew that he wasn't well, going to opt how, out. How do you think it's going to affect him. his drafts? I don't think it is. I, I, it's a tough injury. It's a tough way to end his career and everything. But they said it's non-structural. It's a sprain. He may not be able to, like, run during the combine. He may not well, even be able thing, to, right? to do the know, combine. do some, some of the combine stuff. Nobody's going to care. He'll have a pro day late in the process. It'll be fine. And if you can't figure it out, from watching his film, you're not going to be able to figure it out from him running around in his underwear. Uh, like I, I love the NFL draft. I love it. I know that the the combine is a necessary process, but my favorite part of the combine every single year is the interview process. And to hear what wild stuff came out of the interview and what crazy nonsense came out, you know, I think 40 yard dash is important for uh, you know skill players like corners and safeties and, and wide receivers and tight ends and stuff like that. I don't give a crap what the center runs. I don't care what the tackle runs. I don't mm -hmm. care how big people's hands are, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And I know there's markers for hand size and all that. I just don't care. Can the guy play or not? Did he put it on film? Great. Uh, and if he's fast on film and he runs fast, you can't count it twice. You know, uh, our, our boy Emery has told us that many, many times. That's true. So uh, I just, I think that it's, um, you know, it's just uh, uh, the, the combine is fun, but I don't know that it's always necessary. That's all. All right. Anything else to add before we start looking at uh, UGA in Alabama? Just the Caleb Williams transfer. And I know a lot of people talk about the portal and, and, and all that stuff. But I mean, you know me, Joe. I was, oh, trouble in Oklahoma, huh? But then they immediately <laughs> got Dylan Gabriel. So they'll be OK. I just don't know where Caleb Williams is going to go because, uh, you know, a lot of people. Uh, I heard Joey Galloway on ESPN talk, saying that uh, he assumed it was going to be USC with Lincoln Riley. But they got Jackson Dart who was number one QB prospect last year. They got uh, another freshman kid. His name escapes me, but he's another five-star. Like, they've got talent there. You can always bring in Caleb Williams, and the other kids can transfer. But I don't know. I And I wonder what I wonder what caused him to leave. So mm -hmm. uh, that that is also interesting, too. And, you know, I mean, just as many people complaining about the transfer portal, but uh, I love it. Uh, give I think me, the give transfer me the portal is great. It gives people uh, an opportunity to rejuvenate they're shot. I mean, right. I think that's fantastic. And I, and I think it makes it more exciting. So I, I'm all for it. I think it's great. I think it's always good to have a little buzz too, because then you already start the buzz for next year before the next season's even begun. Really? It's right. the home season's not even over. All right, let's get after it. <laughs> National championship time. I'm going to basically set the stage and step away and let Scott Bogman break down this game for you. We know we saw last time, but again, that's, that's over and done. So Georgia is three point favorites in this game. The number is at 52 right now, I believe. Correct. As of right yeah. now, we're recording mm -hmm. this. We're at 52. Now, last time Alabama came out like gangbusters, they did not get pressure on Bryce Young. Bryce Young, basically, I mean, you could say he won the Heisman off that game. I mean, let's be honest. He did because he was spectacular in that game. It was the game of his life and he had a clean pocket the entire time, which is astounding considering how good that Georgia front is. So... I'm going to ask you, Scott Bogman, break this down for us. How do you see this game panning out? So, I, and I know most of the concentration of this game is going to be the Bama offense versus the Georgia defense and because that's where the stars are. And I completely mm -hmm. understand that. But to me, this game is going to boil down to Georgia's offense being able to keep up with Alabama. Alabama's going to score. Bryce Young is the Heisman winner. He torched them last time. Um, if there's any issues with him, they go to Brian Robinson, who just put up 200 on Cincinnati. So uh, their offense is balanced. They are going to score against Georgia's defense. I know Georgia lived on their defense this year, only allowing set, uh, more than 17 points to um, to Alabama. But I just I don't think even with all these stars, you're stopping Bama. So I think for Georgia, they have to score. Uh, there's no stopping Bama's offense. So. I know that Georgia just dominated Michigan. We saw a big game, particularly out of Jameer Slayer, a Sawyer, excuse me. Um, I want to call him Slayer, but um, a big offensive tackle. 
Dude, uh, <laughs> uh, did you watch him against Aiden Hutchinson? Just I dominating, did. pushing him around like he's a little. That was child. astounding. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, he pushed him around in, in the Orange Bowl, and um, you know, it, it was just it was that line total- had a lot of problems in that game getting set, man. I mean, I there was chaos of where they were going. I've never you, seen anything you, like you that. You were texting me. You're like, this is just they're out. I was like, what? What's yeah. going on? I don't understand. Like, they, I've never seen something like that. And I had to stop and rewind it where the entire line fixed around and changed and they still weren't lined up the way they wanted to and Hutchinson <laughs> had to move somebody over and I'm thinking to myself this is chaos no wonder why they're falling apart Jim here. Harbaugh <clears throat> uh, let's get him in the <laughs> NFL though uh, but <laughs> anyway uh, I mean look we saw Georgia's offense just put it on Michigan right and that mm-hmm. was very very impressive and that's why I think they're favored in this game they've been dominant all year they lost the the SEC championship bad to Bama but they're still favoring this game because of the strength of that defense, but and because they look great on offense. But I, if you go back to the SEC championship, uh, Bama had three sacks in that last in that matchup. Constant pressure, two inter, uh, it forced two interceptions. One of them went was a pick six. One of them was a touchdown. Uh, Alabama had 19 pressures against mm-hmm. Georgia in that game uh, in the SEC championship. The other 13 games, all wins for Georgia, they allowed 38 pressures total that's less than three per game 19 for alabama in that game three per game in every other single game michigan had seven against them uh and uh georgia stopped seven so you can put pressure on uh stetson bennett and still get blown out by this defense and this offense this offense is underrated everyone talks about georgia's great defense their offense is good sets and bennett has been fantastic well the they've never year. been pushed much that's the thing right. they never had to challenge and i think you saw bennett recently you know start to air the ball out a little bit and you're like oh okay the they can actually throw games, the ball. man you're he's right. been great you know <clears> three <throat> touchdowns has. last week three tu- he had three touchdowns in the sec title game and i think the week before that he had four so he's had 10 touchdowns his last three games he's been great um and georgia had a fantastic uh offensive game plan against Michigan Bowers. I mean, you text me, you're like, I cannot believe this kid is a freshman when we're talking about Bowers. He looks outstanding. (laughs) And Dalvin Cook's brother, James Cook, uh, crushed it in the receiving game. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and they have George Pickens, who's going to be a very high, probably day two pick in the NFL draft. Uh, This offense is good. Uh, But for me, there's so many good players. and, And, you know, we can go over the draft prospects if you want here, Joe, too. But I think the best play in this game is Will Anderson, the edge rusher for Alabama. He led the nation with 17 and a half sacks. The one game that Bama lost was to A&M, and I mentioned this last week, too. That was the only game where they didn't get a sack. They took down Ritter six times in the Cotton Bowl. Um, like I said, Michigan had the seven pressures, but they didn't get once to, to Bennett. They didn't get to him. He had three touchdowns. Georgia's defense has been outstanding the whole year. They did get um, a turnover against Alabama. In the SEC title game, Bryce Young threw a pick, one of his five for mm-hmm. the year. But on the season, uh, just take a crack. How many turnovers total do you think Bama had on, in a 13-game season, so 14-game season so far? Well, Yuri said the three there. Uh, I'm going to guess somewhere around, let's say, eight. They had 11 for the they year. 11. Less okay. than one a game, dude. <clears throat> So yeah, that's uh, astounding. It, yeah. Young had five picks and three fumbles lost, and they had three <clears throat> other fumbles that they lost the whole year. So I just don't think you can count on that if you're Georgia, right? And Georgia mm-hmm. is a big play team. That's kind of what I had said going into the SEC title game. I said, I think it's going to come down to some big plays, and Bama made them, and Georgia didn't. So I think that's this whole game comes down to that. I'm not saying Georgia can't win this game. If they win the turnover battle, they can win it, but I just don't see how. Uh, they get turnovers off of Alabama when Alabama didn't turn over the ball more than one time per game, uh, most games. So uh, to me, this is Alabama. I don't think it's a route. I think it will be very close, but you're giving points to Bama. So mm-hmm. I am absolutely taking Alabama in this game. I'm also taking the over. I think it I think it kind of looks a little bit like the last game. Now, uh, you know, if there isn't that <clears throat> turnover, that pick six for Georgia, if they're more efficient, it's going to come down to the wire. It's going to be real close. But in a real close game, I'm still going to give the edge to Bama because the offense is more explosive. So, um, you know, that's kind of how I see this game playing out. I think um, Alabama wins. I think it's close. uh, But I just think this constant pressure is going to cause a couple plays uh, to go Alabama's way on defense. 
And if they return one, I think that's most of the game. So, um, you know, that's kind of how I see it playing out. I think Bama wins on defense. Will Anderson leading the way. Yeah, uh, I got to tell you, there's a lot of good prospects in this game, too. Uh, yeah. I know Dean, somebody that I love, you know, kind of reminds me a little of Devin White, you know, not the biggest mm -hmm. linebacker, but speed. fast speed. Right, exactly. I mean, he, as I'm watching, I was like, you know, he looks about like six foot to me. He's probably around there. Sure enough, he's like right around there. And I look at the height and weight ratio of him and Devin White, and they were like exactly the same. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yep, that's that's very reminiscent there. I loved watching him play. And the other thing, too, and I think you make a good point, whereas last time, you know, Georgia was so used to this massive front that they have mm -hmm. going up against lines that were not prepared. Even you saw in the Michigan game, like you just you're they're not in the same class. Right. But the offensive line of Alabama is an NFL version offensive line. So and this is one of the worst Bama lines that they've had right. in a while. And it's, <laughs> but still, it's Evan still Neal big. is going to be the first player in this game <laughs> right. to get drafted. And he's the and it's still a big Bama. It's still a big group too yeah in terms of size so oh, for sure all of a sudden it changes that dynamic of what they their confidence level and i think it got shaken a little bit <laughs> last time just a little and i think they'll be ready to play and i agree i think this is going to be a tight game i'm kind of with you too and i i'm with you i kind of like the alabama side too at the end of the day and george is disappointed many times in big spots let's be honest i mean right the fact I that mean... they've gotten here i remember talking in the preseason we were talking about georgia being a top five team and saying well you know, but when are they going to have that moment where they? Dude, I think fall that was apart? the first question you asked me on this podcast. I think it was. Is, I think it was. Uh, Georgia's number one, uh, <laughs> and you said I kind of look at that and roll my eyes because they've choked a million times. Can they do it this year? And I said, Yeah, I think they can. But my whole thing was, I think they got to get JT Daniels going, and they didn't. And Stetson Bennett was great. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, man, this is this should be a very very fun national championship game. And like you said, tons of prospects. I mean. Uh, Evan Neal is going to go in the first round. Nicobe Dean is going to go in the first round. Jordan Davis probably first. Jamison Williams has a shot to go in the first round. And then you have guys. Let me let me tell you, Williams, I already have. I did my first crack yesterday at my rankings for 2022 draft. I've already got him <laughs> in redraft leagues as a top 20 wide receiver. I yeah. don't care where he lands. Yeah, and he'll probably move up depending on where he goes. He's fantastic. And he's probably not as good as Judy or Waddle coming out of there, right? So, And, you know, I mean. Oh, he's yeah. different than Waddle. He oh, reminds me a, both of them. he yeah. reminds me a little bit of a poor man's DeAndre Hopkins because he's got that thinner build. Right. You know, whereas Waddle's a little I think Hopkins, that's actually a pretty solid comp. I like that. Yeah, I think the Hopkins because a lot of people, you know, forget when Hopkins first came in the NFL, just how like toothpick legged he was. Right. He really and, and, was those first year or two with the Texans. And you're like, who, how is he even running on those legs? You would look at him sometimes <laughs> in the NFL, but he would. And he's kind of got that same thing, that explosiveness, but he's also got that balance when he catches the football. And like I said, you know, that's a big comp to put on somebody, but he reminds well, me a lot I of mean, Hopkins. If he wants to get to Hopkins, he's got to win 50, 50 balls, 80, 80, 20, oh, just, right. just like Hopkins does. Right. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the hail Murray. That was all Hopkins. Right. I yeah, mean, it's, it's right. a great toss to the right spot, but you have four guys there. Three of them aren't yours. The, the guy that catches it's on your team if that's on that should have been hale hopkins not hale murray right, right? so um you know uh i think he he needs to get better at the contested catch but i mean come on you know none of these guys walking in are completed projects and uh hopkins wasn't either i mean and you got there's so much defense and this is going to be the story of this nfl draft is defense jordan battle fedarian mathis christian harris henry toyoto all from Bama going to get drafted. Uh, Jordan Davis, obviously the huge mountain in the middle. Uh, Trayvon mm -hmm. Walker, Lewis Seen, uh, Devin Wyatt, Darian Kendrick, um, Nolan Smith, Channing Tindall. Like there are so many guys in this draft on the defensive side that are going to get drafted. Um, and then Brian Robinson's going to get drafted. You know, right. um, yeah, I, George Pickens is going to go. Man, high. what a game and, Robinson had last week! Dude, Holy yeah. hat, man! They were they were physically <laughs> outmatched. That was you know, yeah, uh, that was just uh, running. But over. I think Robinson will be a dude. Good I think in the Cincinnati NFL. had a good game plan too because they put pressure. Cincinnati. On, like, well, remember just, when last we talked, we said, look, if Cincinnati can just hang with them for a quarter and a half or so, it's going to be an interesting game. But then it just all fell apart. Yeah, it just you it. know, it's it's just that's what happens. But they did a good job. They hung in there, hung in the fight for a little while. Eventually, Bama hit some of those haymakers, and yeah. you know that's that's the end of it, unfortunately. But That'll Robinson's do. another prospect I think is going to have a huge fantasy impact next year. I like him a lot. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of good players in this draft, and this is going to be a fun, fun game to watch. And maybe the best player in this game is going to be Will Anderson, not even draft eligible yet, uh, true yeah. sophomore. So uh, lots to go for both these teams.
All right, and if you had it, I know the props aren't out right now, Box, but if you had a look at anything, is there anything like automatically in your head would be a strong over or under for an individual player, like if they posted at a certain number or range? If, if Bryce Young's touchdowns are two and a half, I'd take the over on that. Okay. Um, and I don't know, J Jamison Williams' yards. Uh, I, I would go, go over on his yards. I think I might go over, and I might take the under on Brian Robinson's yards. So, and I think coming mm. off of the game that Cook had, I'd take the under on his yards as well. All right, fair enough. There you have it. Enjoy the national championship game, Bogman. It's been a fantastically fun season doing college football with you. I, I tell you, you lit the college football fire <laughs> under me this yeah. year. Yeah, I started last year a little bit, and now this year I am all in. I always know because I, really I get like two or three texts from Joe a Saturday. I'm like, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're getting well, I would come home from flag football and I would sit there and I'd pop some games on. I'd start watching. <laughs> I'd watch a little Iowa State. I'd watch a little this one, a little that one. But yeah, man, I told you, know, I'm there. I'm there. I'm supporting the team, baby. That's it's right. what I do. And honestly, Boggs, your work this year has just been stunning over at Betting Pros. And I Thanks. want to thank you for all the hard work you put on the show. The show does not happen without Scott Bogman. Make sure you follow him on the Twitter machine at Bogman Sports because uh, he is a monster when it comes to college football. And uh, he is a well, great Joey, follower. And hopefully, right too, friend. Yeah, yeah, I try. I love but you hopefully, too, we're going to have, I love you too, buddy. We're going to have <laughs> Bogman doing a lot of the draft coverage with us too on the Fantasy Pro side. So I want to remind everybody, subscribe to Betting Pros wherever you get your podcast, And don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. We're trying to grow that also. All of the podcasts are on the YouTube channel so you can see our glorious faces while we're talking football. And uh, unbelievably, Boggs, that'll do it for college football. But we'll be back again before you know it to talk right. college football yet again. So that'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Scott Bogman, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.